So I just made a choice. I would let the fear in, let it take over, let it do its thing, but only for five seconds. That's all I was going to give it. Welcome everybody to Podcast of the Rings. One, two. Okay, can we talk about how everybody looks and like, did we look like this in the early 2000s, Jessica? I'm so scared. You mean double tanks and long sleeves? Double tanks and long (laughs) sleeves and bell bottom (laughs) jeans and Converse and puka shells. We all looked like this. God, it's so bad. And if we didn't look like her or Will Turner, then we looked like Dominic. (laughs) That's the thing is that I would definitely look like Dominic without Did the you? drugs, which is even worse. Like, <laughs> right? He reminds me of all the dudes like in the back of like shed, like workshop, and like that would have rolls of toilet paper stuffed <laughs> with dryer sheets, and they would smoke a bowl and blow the smoke into that so that you couldn't smell the weed, and somehow that worked. He reminds me of every, like, hot topic worker that would judge me (laughs) for going in there because, like, I wasn't studded out with my – like, I I listened to all the – like, granted, hot topic has changed a lot. And I commend them for their adaptability in this ever-changing market. But back then, they were playing, like, hardcore heavy metal. They only had, like, studded belts, black T-shirts, tight jeans, and band tees. But I listened to a lot of the band tees that they had, so I would go in there. And I'd get a look from a Charlie-looking dude. That's my cat. Um, a Charlie-looking dude. And he'd be like, what do you want? I'm like, right, you know what? Just because I'm wearing my Hollister t-shirt. That's cheaper. <laughs> by the way, my Hollister cheap t-shirt was cheaper than anything you have on this wall right now. Um, and I was looking for, you know, a Silverstein shirt or a Thrice shirt or something Silverstein. like that. Silverstein. I forgot that you, though, are Abercrombie. So, you know what? I don't know that I ever got judged for going in there, although I'm very familiar with the shop girl, shop boy being judged vibe is a thing. Yeah. Especially, it's, it's especially in LA. Um, but <laughs> have I shared the story that the first thong I purchased was from Hot Topic. You actually, I think you have <laughs> told me that, yeah. <laughs> I did. Uh, I have a couple of funny stories from Hot Topic and Spencer Gifts. I had a Jimmy E. World shirt from Hot Topics. Yep. Uh, Hot Topic. And I had a I Heart Johnny Knoxville crop tee from That's them pretty that good. I loved. It was very good. It was a good shirt. I can't think of something else. I, yeah, I don't know. I, st- I still have a Radiohead shirt that I got from Coachella 10 years ago. That's it was it's a tank and it's pretty classic. Nice. Um but those those band tees were where it's at, man. Yeah, they and they really were like are. really, really tight and like you'd wear them like really tight. Like yeah, it's just like it sounds like but, you, dude. That's like that's a you story. No, but like but they were because like Abercrombie, they were like athletically fit. You know, they were like V shaped mm-hmm. and then like tight around the arms. Like these were just small. They like they were just small all over. So like, did you, you buy the wrong size? I bought a medium, and I was a medium in high school. And then you, but the thing is, like, you wash and dry them once, and they're just like, just totally because yeah. they were trash quality. Yeah. But man, did they? Did, and they man, were still thirty five dollars. Uh huh. They were they were expensive. You got you got handed two twenties from your dad. And that's how you were going to spend Absolutely. your money at the mall. <laughs> if you weren't going to Claire's trying to get your ears repeated. But you know what? You know what? That Hot Topic is one of the few stores in my hometown mall that is in the same place. They haven't foreclosed. They haven't changed locations. Nothing. Like I, I bet I could walk in to the Northridge Mall right now and with my eyes closed, walk into the Hot Topic. Oh, Absolutely. I, and it would still be there. I'm yeah. like, I know where the patches are. That's a very good point. Listen, half the time, <laughs> the only person that looks somewhat normal is Jack. And that's and that's the thing. Like, they make him such a pro. I love everything about these two pilots. Like, one, I'd never gotten a response on Instagram. I had like six people DM me, like, "You've never seen Lost," and like, no. I'd ne- I hadn't gotten a response to anything else I posted about. Um. 
And I was very excited for this. I've never seen this show. I kind of know, like, the spoilers of, like, what the island is and stuff like that. But other than that, I really don't know anything. Um, But seeing this and seeing how they portray all these characters, this is a show of, like, why isn't everybody on this island an A-list star after this show comes out? Because well, I guess Matthew Fox just doesn't need to work again. But, like, Couldn't he you tried. Could, Did he try? It felt, well, like, Hollywood tried with him. Because, like, he has, he's in that vantage point. He was in the Alex Cross movie with Tyler Perry. You're saying words that mean, that sounds like salad to me. Well, that's, like, this thing, like, he was wow. in things. He, like, he had a career after this, but other than this, like, it never happened for him. And it's Poor so, guy. like, he was in Speed Racer, Vantage Point, We Are Marshall. Like, he oh, had movies. Um, and, but, I mean, granted, I don't think anybody on this cast needs to work. Again, this is like, this was the biggest show. Like, Hurley never works again. Does Daniel Day Kim Daniel Day Kim, Daniel Kim uh, he he's in that uh, doctor movie, um, um, the I am a surgeon, uh, like he, you've never seen, oh, that went viral, uh, was it The Good Doctor? Um, oh, you mean the TV show? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. About the, uh, the doctor on the spectrum? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, got it. Okay, he's on that? Great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that is a handsome man. That jawline. Like, I just watched Twisters, and you and Alex should go see oh, Twisters. It's okay. really, really good. Okay. And when I tell you that people started clapping with Glenn Powell in a wet T-shirt, people started clapping <laughs> with Glenn Powell. Lying. I swear, no, I swear. The, the, <laughs> what's wrong with America? It didn't, like, That's erupt into applause, but it was, like, a slow, it was, like, almost like a slow clap moment. Was it, like, was it like women in their mid-50s going, oh, <laughs> it, it, it was, but then, like, you you heard a few younger people being like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was like. like yes, daddy. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> the man's got it. And Daniel Day Kim's jawline is the exact same where it looks like he looks like he's got fillers, but that's just his face. Gig it's just like chiseled. gorgeous face. Yeah. I am so offended when everyone turns down his uni. I'm pretty sure it's uni or something because he's like, he's. Harvesting sea urchin. Yeah. I think that's what sea urchin is called. Never had it. Uh, it seems... I, I, I can't do it. There's certain seafood... Even though I'm like vegetarian, sometimes I've, I'll be pescatarian because mm -hmm. it's easier. There's certain seafoods I will draw the line, at, uh, line on and I don't want to eat sea urchin because it seems like incredibly cruel. But he's like trying to prepare food for people. And everyone's like, nah, man, I ain't never seen anything like that, you weirdo, the foreigner. Like, that's the thing is that I don't, in this, this two pilots, other than Jack, everybody kind of sucks. Everybody kind of sucks. Also, did you know they put buck teeth on what's her face so that she could be, have like a flaw on Evangeline Lilly? Did they really? Yes, she was too pretty, and everyone needed to have like, some in, sort of fluff. She like I loved her as Toriel, and that's like you know ten years later. Sure, it's sure. insane how like gorgeous she's, she she's is. Ripe, she's ripe, ripe off the vine. This okay, is... that you you should never say that again. <laughs> you should no. I don't care that she is a full grown adult as you were saying ripe, but that is no. You don't describe anybody as ripe, Jessica. That is yeah. bad. <laughs> I don't know if it's actually bad, but I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> like, I'm just thinking about the one comment we got about me giving them the ick. I agree with you. I've yeah. given myself the ick. That was bad. <laughs> she's just but she's just so gorgeous. I don't you were know. You're about I, to say it again. You're no, about to double down on right. I wasn't. <laughs> but I don't know how else to explain that she's like in a prime. She's also in her primes. In Ant Man, I'm not saying she's not gorgeous, but there's something really oh, gorgeous about her. Oh, and it's the like, like age happens to us all, but it's like saying, you know, you look at Jeff Goldblum, you know, like you look at young Jeff Goldblum in like The Fly, and you're like, oh my god, and then you look at Jeff Goldblum now, and he's a, a beautiful silver fox. Anyone, that's why he's never married because he could still get it. Yeah, and eventually, Lily can get it, but she can particularly get it 
in this show. That's it's all I was trying it's to say. Crazy. I'm like, not Matthew going to Fox edit is it handsome, out. and what's the other guy's name? Um, Will Turner is the act, is the character, right? Will Turner is his name. Will Turner. What are they? Why am I calling him Will Turner? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, honestly, if it was Will Turner, I would have lost. Uh, would have laughed very hard. Uh, Josh Holloway. Josh. Yes, Holloway. but what's his character's name? What is his character? Uh, that's not Jack. Uh, James Sawyer Ford. Sawyer. Why am I calling him Will Turner? I don't know. I was. It's the second time I've said that. So Sawyer, 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 which is a great, a great character name. Yes. Um. I, I just can't believe they put him in a long sleeve and a t-shirt. I can't was believe he that's... Too, was he, like, too buff? Do you no, think? No, he's very light. Like, no, he's a lithe man. Like, even when... I noticed that he was... When he was talking to her after she stripped him of the gun. And he's like, hey, I'm turned on by that. Like, he he's he's actually has very undefined neck muscles. And he's kind of, like, thin looking. I don't know. I feel like there's secret muscles under there that they, like, had to hide. That that may be the case. Yeah. Or he, like, buffed up during this. But, like, he looks real smooth. <laughs> I think he actually didn't have very many muscles. But it's very possible they were just trying to hide him. It's Because they really do make him look dinky. Like, they make him look like a, you know, a MAGA dude. That's just... the thing is that, like, this is almost the same thing of, like, I already know that I'm going to cast Sean Bean as Josh Holloway because of the hair. Like, the hair uh... is just so bad that you put it on this very <laughs> handsome man because like i i didn't watch this so like he shows up in community as uh, during one of the paintball games as oh, like the outlaw right. that's and you know is. the whole oh. joke is like oh he's got a better jawline than you you know joe McHale, and he's much more handsome and he, and then joe McHale's like so insecure he's like yeah you're not even that handsome and he's like what's wrong with you <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so great and this I is another guy that, that like why didn't it happen? Because even my mom, because he's the very beginning of Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, the fourth one, and okay. he dies. And okay. she's like, oh, I really – and my parents didn't watch Lost. And so my mom was even like, oh, I really liked him. Like, why, didn't, why isn't he bigger? And it's like such a thing that even like women of my mom's age, like I don't know why Josh Holloway I thought it was the dude from Supernatural, but he's not the dude from Supernatural. Like, again, all these people have careers. But, like, when I when I say why didn't it happen, it's like, why aren't they George Clooney? Why aren't they Brad Pitt? Why aren't they, right. like, Chris Evans even? Right. Like, why didn't Josh Holloway get into an, the MCU or a DC comic book movie? I don't know. Is it because they started in TV? Like, was there still the outdated thought process of you not being able to jump that shark? Like, I guess because I'll always there's remember still stigma against that, you know, I don't think there is anymore. I think that's gone. Um, but I do remember like around this time, you know, I was watching Entourage and there's like a scene where like, you know, Ari fires a girl for suggesting Vince do TV. And he's like, yeah, well, when Vince looks like Gary Sinise, he'll do CSI, you know, fucking New Hampshire or whatever it is. <laughs> um, and so that I, I feel like the first time was prop the first like demarcation that I can remember is true detective when McConaughey yeah. and um, I can't think of his name. Harrelson. Yeah. Woody Harrelson like did that. And everyone's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause but that also, was like during getting... the reconnaissance. That was like right after he won his Oscar. Oh, you can tell he's like, he's still really thin from Dallas buyers club. And everyone's like, Oh, this is his next thing. Okay. What's going to happen. And now there's like, everybody has a show. Like, everybody's got a show now. That's interesting. Like, and Meryl Woody, Streep's on, you know, was in an HBO show. Yeah, she, well, she also did um, Angels in America. So she did, like, special, she did, she did a special series with HBO, like, 10 years prior to that. That was wonderful. Um, but that was also, uh, Al Pacino was in that as well. So that was just, like, a special thing. The, the, the lines were getting blurred. But Loss is also happening during the era of the strike too right it almost derailed it didn't it like when was the writer's strike like 2007 correct. 2008 i believe that's correct yes yeah. you, you look at i think to the third season's own or the th fourth season's only 14 episodes long it's so crazy then, that we save 14 episodes and now we're getting eight episodes of house of dragons every two <sighs> years like what, let me ask you this based off happened, of that man i know we they used really to be a country jessica <laughs> 
Let's go Kamala. Um, let me ask you this. Were the first two episodes, could they have been one? And, but, or, or did, is the pacing good? Like based off of that? Like I was going to ask you that question too. I'll, I'll answer yours, but like, did these, uh, what was uh, the premiere dates on this? Because were these episodes like, was it a two part same nighter or was it a two oh. part like next week, like coming up next week? It feels like it's a Super Bowl movie, a uh, show, doesn't it? It doesn't does. It? it definitely, and those don't work anymore. So this was a week apart. I'm, I'm looking yeah, at the dates right now. I September that. 22nd and then September 29th. I, now part two with where is she waking up, the polar bear, all that stuff. Right, right. Other than the pilot getting sucked out Jurassic Park style and left in a tree all bloodied. By the way, shout out Greg Grunberg. That's JJ's boy. I Anytime really JJ is. works, that guy's getting a paycheck. You love to see him. Um, <laughs> That's so true. It's so great. Um, but other than that, I don't know if I would have come back for part two. Like, maybe, I, I can't put myself in 2004, because I probably would have, but I was a big CSI Survivor guy on Thursday nights. Like, that that was my lineup right there. And then OC was for me. Um, but I don't know if I would have come back on September 29th. Here's why you would have. Because while you're watching Survivor and all those shows, you're getting pumped. The The advertisement for this show that's true you see sawyer bring out all i could think about while watching this was trying to put myself back into the memory of loss like the commercials and the teasers leading up to this man they spent zero money on the graphics by the way i could see (laughs) negative money (laughs) that shit is in kid pics (laughs) y'all I could see the artifacting. <laughs> like <laughs> of- <laughs> this is what is missed. We talked to I, what else? When else we talk about this? Like well, I think we were talking about Rings of Power. You know, House of Dragon. We're like, this is called a pilot episode. It literally says pilot part one. It pilot really part does. Two, and Which is a fun pun. <laughs> it is really funny. Uh, but like for a pilot, it does look really good. So they spared some expense on Lost on the screen. Because you know what? You don't need anything. You don't else. need it. It opens very cinematically too, like when he like runs. That plane crash is jarring. Like it's it's loud. I am about to get on a plane in less than two weeks. Alex was really excited to watch this with me because he loves Lost. Mm-hmm. Even even though everyone has mixed feelings about how the season carry, like the series carries yeah, yeah, on, yeah. and whatever, fuck them. Alex likes it, and so he's been meaning to rewatch it. And so I said, let's. I'll wait. You know, I'll wait for you. We'll watch it together. He get, gets back from home from work. And I said, I will watch this with you in two weeks after I've been on a plane. I can't watch this in between now and then because it's such a visceral experience being on that plane. What they've done, the crash, and then when the guy gets sucked into the engine and then the wing but crashes. Yeah, there's, there's a thing called the Darwin Award and that guy earned it. Like, what, what are you we doing, needed, We needed him to die right away. Yeah, because he would have, like, you know, eaten all a week's rations in, like, a day or, like, spilled the last of the water supply or, you know, broke the... By the way, I've never heard the word transceiver before. I had to look it up to make it sure it was word. Is it a real thing? It's a combination of transmitter and receiver, but, like, I'd never heard the word but I don't know if Lost coined this term. Because I've never heard it before, ever. Jack knew it, and the pilot immediately said transceiver. And they I, kept saying it. So I was yeah. like, I, I, I don't know. It, it was very jarring, and I still don't like the word transceiver. No, uh, that's fair. It's actually, it is odd. It, it, I, I was breaking down the etymology in my head, too. I'm going, is this a thing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's talk about Dominic a little bit. Yeah? Or anything He's else? He's the biggest star in this show. He is. At this time, because this is straight, this is a year after Lord of the Rings, and this is, like, the most hyped up show of all time. Like, of all, like, I know we live in a day now, the boys, Rings of Power, House sure. of the Dragons going on, all these things. The, you didn't do TV like this in 2004. Mm-mm. You had your ERs, your right. procedurals, your NYPD blues. And Lost changed the game of, like, what is going to happen next week? JJ was giving us cinema on 
the small screens. Genuinely. JJ knows how to start things better than anybody else. He knows how to start a story. Does he know how to end one? I don't know. I really don't know because it's been shown a few times that he really doesn't. Yeah, yeah. But the, the mystery box, no one does it better. No one does the mystery box better. God, it's so true. It's so true. There was a couple times um, where we see Dominic. Dominic decides to go with them to seek out the cockpit. And he's like, you do? Do you recognize me? I've been waiting for this. And I was like filling in the blanks going, I was in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, right. <laughs> um. It's. I think I remember at the time because again I maybe watched the first six episodes of Lost. I was never part of the. If it was on, maybe I watched it and I was like, "What the fuck is Locke doing?" You know what I mean? Like I, I might even if it was three seasons in, I would ca- I would watch it. I was never part of the watch parties. There was watch parties at the time. I don't know Ooh, if you had sure. friends that were doing this, but it was do- distracting that. Dominic was in it to me. It is, because, like, even with how gorgeous, like, Evangeline Lilly is, with how annoying, like, I was introduced to Maggie Grace through Taken. I'm sure I'd seen her before, but, like... Is that the daughter? That's the sister. The, the... This is the annoying girl who's sun tanning, right? Yeah, who speaks French and stuff like that. Ooh, I hated But, her. yeah, she's the daughter in Taken. Um, and, like... That's I mean, what I meant, she's the daughter in Taken. Yeah, but just, like, I don't... Everything she does, she cries. Everything she does, she cries. She's she's very good at being annoying and crying and everything that she does. Some of us are. Some of us get ki- like cast for the things that we're good at. Very, very she's true. She's good at that. I, Dominic does stand out. Like even even knowing, you know, twenty years later, like twenty years later, we're watching this almost like at the anniversary, the twenty year anniversary, and I'm sure that's coming up, and it's on Netflix, so it's kind of trending right now. But just twenty years later. He still does stand out as just like, and I'm Dominic Monaghan. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the biggest movie of all time. Right? And I know all of these guys probably worked. And I know the um, Locke, uh, is that his name? The old man? Terry Quinn, yeah. He, like, I recognize him later. He's the mayor in Tombstone, one of my favorite westerns. Oh, like, oh. And, like, that that movie is so started, star-studded. It's crazy. Is this the original one that you're talking about or is this is this a remake of tombstone uh the kurt russell and val kilmer one. he's he's the mayor in that he's the mayor i don't remember that he well, looks he, so and, young yeah and, and same he, with uh the bad guy wild. from avatar you know the big buff guy from avatar i couldn't you couldn't pay me to recognize that person okay well he's a he's a bad guy in tombstone as well i love tombstone uh clearly because i can recognize everybody um i've seen that movie a grip of times so though it's very good i He's also um, basically he's an alien hunter in Resident Alien. Oh, okay, Most recently. nice. It's perfect. I mean, he's not not Locke, but <laughs> it's. But I mean, it, hey, seems, you get typecast. You keep working, baby. <laughs> his his like backgammon scene with Walt is incredible. So did okay. So that's the thing is that there it says forty eight survivors. Do okay. we get to know, like, are you, how many of these survivors are you interested in? How many stories in these two episodes? Like, we'll start out with, we know, with our star, Dominic Monaghan. Are you right. interested in knowing more about Charlie? No. I'm not either. Like, I'm no. just, I don't need, like, do you think. It's did because he get of the drugs, the, though. Okay, so he did, he found the drugs in the, yeah. in the bathroom. And obviously he's going to run out and he's going to go through withdrawals and, you know, get right. clean or whatever. But other than that, like, I'm not that interested. Like, there's nothing there to really hook me about him. I kind of know a little bit. Yeah, it's interesting because we get more of him than most of the other survivors in the first, at least in the first episode, right? They For kinda sure. Like, yeah, he's, definitely... he's the biggest name. Yeah, and they put yeah exactly like they're kind of they're they're using the paycheck with him and they're using the paycheck well. Um, I happen to know like I, re- I remember a little bit more of what Charlie does next, not necessarily with regards to the drugs, but who he ends up like caring for, and that gets me a little bit more involved in him. So I'm looking forward to that part of the story. But they don't hint at this whatsoever in the first two episodes. So I've got no interest. Nothing that's happening in these two. S- uh, pilots essentially yeah. are interesting me about him especially because we made a just a, like a decision about him he's a drug user who just wants to be recognized 
Um, so if that's what they want us to think right now, they succeeded in that. And, and besides I, the fact that it's distracting that it's Dominic Monaghan. I do love that just like everybody's hitting on Evangeline Lilly because how could, how could you not? What else could you do? It's actually it's actually very funny when he hits on the sister though too because he's like, oh, if you're going, I'm going. It's great. Yeah. Because <laughs> like what else? I think about this often. Maybe I'm crazy and maybe I'm just like one of those people. But if I'm on a plane... I look around and I go, well, who would I have a baby with here? Not anybody. <laughs> like, like if I had to, if I was on a, a desert island, who would I be friends with? <laughs> like, who would I fall in love with? Because you fall in love. With, like, it's mere exposure effect. We were only friends with the kids in our elementary school because those were the kids that we were in elementary school with. Yeah. If we got, if we crash landed onto an island, those are the people you're stuck with. So who are you going to be friends with? <laughs> you, I, I, you can't tell me you haven't looked around a plane and gone, if I'm stuck on a plane with this person, would I be happy? <laughs> I don't think I do. I, I think I'm just like in my own little world because I'm, I'm not a good flyer either. So I'm just like, let me just get from A to B. Um, sure. Like I, I can take in my surroundings because like okay. when I went to Japan, I couldn't find like where like our luggage was. And so I remember like two rows over, there's people speaking English and I saw them and I was like, hey, where's our luggage? He's like, oh, you got to find your flight. I was like, we were on the same flight. He's like, oh, OK, we're right over there. I was like, oh, cool. They recognized you or you said that? I recognized them. Got like it. I was like, hey, where where do we get our luggage? He's like, oh, well, you got to look of what your flight is. And where I was like, oh, well, we were on the same flight. Gotcha. And he was like, gotcha. oh, well, we're right over there. I was like, OK, thank you. Yeah. So, so I can take in stuff like that. But I'm not looking around being like, who am I going to bone on a desert? I like, oh, by the way, what an amazing job to have that you're just like in Hawaii. In filming? Hawaii shooting this show. Right? Dumb. Dumb. These people are the luckiest. Right. Like what a, what a gig to get, dude. It's so true. It's so true. Um, I just... Listen, I get a little nervous on planes, so, like, I think about it in that way. Like, if I survive. Anyway, um, what was the question again? I don't oh, know. I don't care about Charlie. I care about Evangeline Lilly. I think I somewhat remembered that she was the prisoner. That, um, that I will say, that is the big reveal for me. That is yeah. the big reveal for me, is that she's the prisoner. Because I didn't know. I thought it was Josh Holloway, and he was like, oh, he knew... Uh, you know, that the cop was there because he was escorting the cop. And, you know, because right. I was like, oh, he's he's racist. And, you know, right. that's the thing. Like 20 years later, it's like, oh, of course, he's accusing the Middle Eastern guy. I'm sorry. If y'all weren't around in 2004, the Islamophobia in post 9-11 world could not be overstated. It was I, everywhere. So much so that there's like it still is insidious in our culture. Nowadays. Absolutely. It was terrible. And so. That like that it, it would like happen. A, that's why he was cast. That's why yeah. I mean, not yes. This is a diverse cast for the most part. Nowadays, Dominic wouldn't be cast as you know as the white guy. He'd be cast as some other dude or like a, a female chick singer from a band. And Josh Holloway would be Latino. You know, we wouldn't have as many white. I actors. think Josh Holloway would be a person of color. I think Dominic Monaghan would still be a white guy. Domin <laughs> would it still be Dominic Monaghan? It would still today? be Dominic Monaghan. <laughs> but you know, like you, you, we brought up earlier about like how TV didn't have that kind of respect. Because I remember even thinking that I was like, "Oh, this is what the guy from Lord of the Rings is doing next—a TV yeah. show." Yeah. Granted, it turned out to be the biggest TV show like of all time. Right. But at the time, I was like, "Oh man." Like, jobs must be tough out there. Because, you know, you had, at the time, like, Viggo Mortensen, like, his next movie was, like, Hidalgo, this big Disney sprawling oh, right. epic. Yeah. Uh, Orlando Bloom was already in Pirates. Like, you had these guys doing these things. Kate Blanchett was already getting nominated for Oscars with, like, The Aviator. Like, you had all these guys. I forgot she was in The Aviator. Sorry, I'm just amazed. Like, like this no, is, the whole it, era is coming back to me right now. It's very true. All these things happen. And so, but just like, it's, it's such a time capsule, like this little thing in a bottle. That's what Lost is. And it is interesting to watch them set up all these pieces. But I will say it wasn't even about the hype of the show, but a little bit of it. Like they didn't set up as much as I thought they were going to. I actually thought they set up way too much. See, I'm, I'm kind of... 
not underwhelmed with loss because it's tough to judge in the first two episodes of like how sure. with especially with how this this friggin show goes but sure. like a polar bear evangeline lilies okay what do they set up what do they set so up? So they 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 set up there's something gargantuan. That's the thing. There's there's a T Rex on the island, which I'm just gonna call it a T Rex because Jurassic Park was also filmed in Hawaii. It sounds like a T Rex. It sounds and like a T Rex. Please don't it's spoil because trees. whatever you know, I, I don't. don't. I, okay, great. I only know literally the end of the show of what the island is or, or what it's supposed to represent, and I could be even wrong about that. And I think I know that too, but I also am not sure. So I think I know that as well. But I also want to just pretend I don't know anything. Yeah. So they set up this gargantuan thing, but there's also horns blowing. So, like, something mechanical exists okay, yeah. on the island. They also set up that a transmission has been going and something killed everyone on the island for 16 years. I thought it was, like, they 30 s- years. Was it 16? 16. He 16? said, Saeed, okay. Saeed said 16. Got it. And they establish... That um, polar bears are here. That's insane. <laughs> oh, that's a, it's a, I thought the polar bear thing was like later on. I did not know it. Ha- I remember the polar bear thing for some reason. Like I remember just the I polar didn't bear. I did remember this. Uh, but I thought it happened later. I didn't know it happened sure. in, uh, in the pilot. To me, that's way too much. <laughs> like that's jumping the shark already. I feel like. I guess one of the complaints I can kind of recall is that, like, there was too many twists, too many new things. Like, and then it's this, and then it's this, and then it's this. Like, they they kept on adding a lot of weird things to the the show, but not answering questions. That's what I kind of remember the criticisms being. Yeah. And so I'm looking, I was looking at it from that perspective. Holy shit, there's a fucking polar bear no (laughs) was kind of it was kind of crazy to me it definitely is it's definitely crazy and like i don't know because i feel like the polar bear is such like a a what the fuck yeah that they didn't need they didn't need it because it's obvious like because within that same scene of like oh well there's your thing that killed the pilot and the guy and both charlie and jack are like no 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 we were 30 feet in the air in the cockpit and he got yanked out and thrown into a treetop. And so it's not that. No. And then it's not obviously like trampling trees. And so it's just like, why have that in there? But that's the thing is that the only character thing they really, the only character mystery they set up, you don't know much about the Korean couple, Daniel day Kim. And, um, Oh, I can't, I saw her name. Sorry, I had the IMDb up and now it's gone. What is going on there? Yoon Jin Kim. Like, they don't speak English. I think they do. I, I do, too. I think they both speak English. Um, And I don't know if she's, like, an indentured servant, a mail order bride, it's or some... It's feeling a little uh, human trafficky, right? Very, very human trafficky there. Um... Or I don't know, like it might just be abusive husband, you know, like with her buttoning the shirt or something totally, like that. Totally, it could be that husband, it, uh, and it probably is that to be fair. But, but it, it's got level, it's got weird levels at. But on, but that's the only thing, and that's even more so of like my thing, because like there's only one scene, but of like you know, stay close to me, like you only talk to me or something like right, that. Right. And then the button scene. Other than that, yes, there's not much. The only really person you didn't even mystery, let her eat, bro. Yeah. Crazy. I'm just saying that's a little crazy. That's a that's a third thing. But just like the only real person mystery thing is Evangeline Lilly with the cop. Like, but even yeah, we're getting less information about these people's backgrounds. Although we have like some insight to like Jack's probably an alcoholic, right? Yeah, we're getting that. And yes, it's like a twist on what is Evangeline Lilly. That, yeah, that's kind of it. And so I understand that the focus, I guess, should be on the island of, like, where they are. But I still need to care about the characters. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Give me – like, well, we also know Dominic's a drug drug abuser. But no, like, we know certain things about the – But like, we don't have mysteries about I, Yeah, them. I don't have anything, like, 
what am I coming back next week for? Okay, we've yes. established, we've crashed the plane. We've got 48 survivors. Like, I know, I know that there's, quote unquote, others because they say it in the office. Like, when they go down to the warehouse, like, oh, remember on Lost when they met the others? That's all I know about them. Oh, I forgot about That's that. That's the only line I know. Jesus. Um, because uh, they all like Dwight always uh, references Lost on the Office. Um, <laughs> I know, and so it's it's a very Dwight show. That's uh, amazing. But like there are there are some compelling people, but so much, so much is given to Jack of just being the upstanding protagonist. Yes, and I'm sure he's gonna have flaws later on. But like from the moment he wakes up, he's rescuing people, he's pulling people out of wreckage. He's, you know, tourniqueting the, the cop's leg, you know, he try he throws himself over the pregnant girl to, like, save her from the, the shrapnel. Doesn't even right. mention that he gets hit by shrapnel. And right. He is coaching Evangeline Lilly with five seconds of fear. And just, like, he's just, like, this knight in shining armor. Uh, but it takes up so much screen time that everybody else is just, like... <sighs> 2004 acting of like oh so mysterious and, <laughs> and on the, everyone's on the verge of tears at all times because that's how it was in the early 2000s guys. But also it's a very traumatic situation. No no I, but it's almost like they kind of skip that where everyone's like everyone's pretty cool that they just survived a plane yes, crash. This is true. Besides Evangeline Lily or like even oh no it's Maggie Grace. But it's presented in like this annoying fashion because, you know, she's sunbathing and he's like, right. oh, come unpack. Like, you got to help. And she's like, no, I'm good. Like, you know, the rescue plane's going to be here. He's like, what's wrong with you? She's like, what are you talking about? We just survived a plane crash and we don't know when we're going to get rescued. What am I supposed to do? And it's like it's presented in a oh, my God, this annoying bitch. It's like, no, dude, she's like, she's kind of got a point. But you've spent the entire other time making me hate her that when she does have this breakdown, it's presented as like this little girl that didn't get like her ice cream from her parents or something. A legitimate breakdown, by the way. Legitimate She's trauma. having an existential crisis about treating someone like shit that's dead now. <laughs> and he's like, you fucking brat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this guy too is is too good looking that he's not good looking anymore he the brother is, he's the most 2004 looking he's, mofo on the planet he looks he like is straight out of the abercrombie lookbook <laughs> yes he, he's, he's got probably, the ruffled bangs oh, hair man. he's got the collared shirt with the shirt underneath i don't think he has puka shells but if he did it wouldn't surprise me like, he has a puka shell anklet for sure. No, no guys wore anklets, Jessica. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, like I'm telling you, as an Abercrombie 2004 boy, no one wore anklets. I'm we just had saying. we had surfer medallions. That's what we had. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys have toe rings too? No one had toe rings. What are you talking about? I'm just trying to get on board Did you here. know any straight men in 2004? No one had Not toe really, rings. really, bro. <laughs> I was doing theater. I was falling for every gay Asian man I've ever met in my life. See, that's the thing is that my high school had a huge drama program, so all the straight dudes were in drama. Not what happened to me. The president of our drama club got drafted into the MLB. Scout's honor. No, I believe you. Yeah. Like that, that, that's so funny when people always like, you know, have that stereotype, the gay drama guy. It's like, yeah, all, like all the jocks were in drama at my school. It's was, it was very strange. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. It was like, it was like literal drama that my brother stopped doing football to do plays with us too. Who, so uh, who is he? Zach Efron in high school musical? <laughs> he, my brother what my brother was the protagonist in all of those shows. I'm not I'm telling you <laughs> so <Soren. they're, laughs> everyone knew the Verdes and we were like we were like that prominent. We might as well have he might as well have been Zach Efron for sure. Gotcha. Yeah no I'm just saying we were a big deal. Um, so if, if you can put yourself in this, would you come back for episode three? Oh yeah. You think you would? Yeah, I'm in. You know, it's cool when she has sex appeal. She has sex. I'm here for Evangeline Lilly. It's honestly. like she's like, it's. We're going to talk about House of Dragon after this. And it's like. She's she's just the hottest thing on screen. And like this is with Josh Holloway. Maggie Grace is also very pretty. 
uh, you know, um, Yunjin Kim is gorgeous. Like the pregnant mama good. is very cute. Yes, too. everybody is very pretty on screen. Like it was very stereotypical casting in 2004. Like you had to be skinny and good looking to be on television. It's very true. Like Jorge Garcia Hurley was like, whoa, they go. Oh, they cast to the a point big where person? they have to call him Lardo. Like yeah. they had to say it. They had to. And he has like sad. he like he still had to be like the comic relief, you know, where he passes out from the blood and stuff like that. But everybody else is just like a, a stereotypical actor. Um, but Evangeline Lilly is just like, holy shit, this is crazy. <laughs> like I, if, if I no when she one... appeared on screen, I was like, because <laughs> I know who Evangeline Lilly is, you know, Ant Man, uh, the Hobbit, obviously. Like I've seen her. For like 10 years now, she's been a prominent A-lister. But like, I didn't watch Lost. And so I missed that. And so I mean, when I she came on screen, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll see that she put, they put buck teeth on her to like somewhat normalize her. She's only cuter. Are we, have we gotten to the point now of this podcast where you have forgiven me for saying that she's ripe? No, never. Okay. It's like it's like giving giving her the buck teeth. It's like I don't know if you ever saw the movie Ready Player One. Um, yeah, I never saw the movie. Okay, well you know in the book the Wade I can't think of her name. Port Ar Wines. Artemis. It's a Port Weinstein. Yeah, but like in the movie, it's like this barely. It's Olivia Cook, by the way, who is you know um. Queen Allison in House of the Dragon. Oh, I didn't know that. Objectively a gorgeous person. I didn't know that. And I remember when she Are got cast. Are you kidding? I have to look this up. You have to look up the, the birthmark they give her. Because she's like, this is why I have, you know, an online profile. Because no one would ever think I was pretty. And everyone's just like, oh my god, dude. Oh, that's actually upsetting. Because the, the whole character, first of all, it, uh, Maraud's as a, as a boy the whole time. And then the Port Weinstein from the book, I remember. No, his covers, best like, friend does the boy thing, I thought. I don't think this character ever plays. Maybe. I thought, I thought, I, maybe I'm misremembering it. God, it's like hidden under her eye, too. Oh, my God. No, it's so bad. bad. It's like, it's uh, become a meme where it's just like. How old is she in this, though? What a cutie. She's so cute. That it, you can't even, it looks like eyeshadow. This is so embarrassing. People have Port Weinsteins. And they're beautiful people. Don't I, like uh, offend them this way. Yeah, it's it's tough. That's but, too bad. Uh, like just seeing everybody here, and then Evangeline Lily is just like these these go to eleven, and it's just like <laughs> like you didn't even need like the it was all a little gratuitous, you know, her washing her shirt like in the waves and stuff, and it's just like I didn't need that, but I wasn't complaining about it. Um, but it's just like. I can't get over like, how lucky all these people are. It's like, oh, hey, you're going to be on the biggest show in television. You're going to make millions. Probably not have to work again. Oh, yeah, and it films in Hawaii. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, it's we're going like, to go on location, by the way. It's the dream. It's, it's the fucking dream. Um, yeah. Are, are you ready to get to the other side of this and start casting Lord of the Rings characters? Yeah, I feel like this is one of those things where, like, Lost has been picked apart to death. You will find no short supply of hour like long YouTube essays about Lost and sure. theories and what the island is and who this person represents and all these things. And we've only gotten to the first two episodes. So the mysteries have yet to begin to unfold. Are you coming back for the third episode? I'm going to try. I'm really bad with TV. I, like, I see. Okay. Just like self-imposed. I'm really terrible. But I've gotten better. You know, I just finished The Boys. I need to go see, watch The Bear. You know, we're doing our, our show about Hash the Dragon, so that always helps. But this cast is that loaded. I'm even seeing um, Elizabeth Mitchell, who um, you'll probably recognize her if you see her IMDb photo. She's just like a staple of like really intense, you know, network television harold okay. perrineau um the dad of walt is a really uh. really good actor um michael emerson i it hasn't shown up but like he's linus i know he's like a big he bad guy actually does help um move him and Locke move um a piece of the plane off of the guy who was pinned oh i didn't yeah, know you that. see him you see him briefly Ooh. which i thought was interesting too okay. these people yeah to pick this apart just one extra step 
They should have gone through the luggage immediately. Who's immediately. who's not going through the, like if we can pick some nits here, who's <laughs> not going through the luggage immediately? And I'm sorry, like to inventory? Are you kidding me? Like I You don't inventory everybody's fucking snacks. We all have snacks on a plane. And also, I'm I, why are only two people going to the cockpit? If it is the most important mission to find this transceiver, and also there's going to be important things in the pilot cockpit and other, like, you know, overhead luggage. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I understand this is a tragedy and people are dying and getting sucked into to, to jet planes and stuff like that. It happens. But it seems like no one really lost anybody. Like, everyone that survived, everyone they knew on the plane is alive. The black woman lost her husband, I think, but we haven't seen her deal with the fallout because she says to Jack, tell my husband when he gets back, and Jack resuscitates her, oh, and we never okay, see the right. husband. Okay. We, you know what I mean? Okay, we haven't dealt with that yet. But other than that, it seems like, as far as I can remember... The dog's even fucking alive! The dog is alive, Jessica! <laughs> And he's just chilling. <laughs> what, what a what a cat like dog, by the what way. Labrador, what Labrador retriever isn't going after the people that right? they see in the what bush? What dog is just chilling, um, existentially watching from the sidelines? Mm, I will watch these people become Lord of the Flies. <laughs> yes, my master plan has just begun to take shape. <laughs> that dog doesn't approach Jack and Kate. While they're going to the cockpit, it was watching them walk. It was watching them. Uh, no dog ever. No dog ever. That dog would have stayed with Jack, woken him up with licks to the face, and then been, like, attached to him, trauma bonding right then and there. <laughs> 100%. I couldn't agree with you more. All right, let's take a quick break, and I'll see you on the other side, and we'll answer those Lord of the Rings questions. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Lost, L-O-T-R-L-O-S-T, P-O-T-R pod, L-O-S-T pod, P-O-D. Keep, you got it. Keep going. Potter pod. <sighs> That's redundant, though. Podcast of the Rings pod. I mean, so is the ATM machine, though. <laughs> it's true. Potter, Potter Pin number. pod. We'd also uh, like to take this moment on this break to welcome in a couple more Patreon members that have subscribed. I think it's either because we're doing dual duty with Lord of the Rings stuff and House of the Dragon. We also have to take this time to thank Arsenal Roy 2 k because he's at the $10 tier of our Patreon, where if you subscribe, you get shouted out during this show. And he also technically has an elven ring for being at the $10 tier. Heck yes. Well, uh, Thank you so much, you Arsenal. You can still get the $100 slot that only one person can have. Only one. Only That's one. A lot of, you get a shirt that says, I have the uh, this slot and all I got was this shirt. <laughs> Honestly, we'll send you that shirt every month you subscribe. We, sh we fucking should. Yeah. Because it, it is that much money at a certain point. We, we should get a new shirt designed every month. You know what? That's what we'll do. A new shirt every month. A new shirt month. every month. It'll just have like a different number, like how many months you do it in a row. It'll just have a number on the back The design or doesn't change. Design doesn't change. It's <laughs> like a tiny number, like somewhere. You'll never know where the number is. You know what I'd like to do, though, too? Some of you know, like, when we get to 10 Patreon subscribers, we're going to review Lord of the G-Strings, all those things. It's going to be fun. But I'd like to issue a challenge to our audience to, like, tweet at us or Instagram us or, like, message us or DM us. Like, what is, like, part of our lore of the show? Like, mm -hmm. um, like if we were to make a poster, what are, like, the 10 things you would include? Like, you guys definitely have to have lemons because Jessica always talks about lemons. Or I don't know, something like that. So Do you I talk about say, lemons? No, I love lemons, though. You do? Um, I do. I genuinely love lemons. Like, okay, like someone would draw on the poster, like me uh, not throwing trash away in the movie theater. or Possibly you... your greatest flaw as a person. <laughs> I, I throw it away. 
I'm just saying I wish I didn't have to. <laughs> no one wants to, but you don't. Like I'm just speaking the truths of millions. I No, I do throw it away. I'm just saying there was a time where you didn't, and it was colloquially abse- acceptable. It was in the zeitgeist. That's all I'm saying. When? When we were children. No. Yes. No. You were still an mm-hmm. a-hole. My dad was, because he was the one who, who instructed Oh, by the me. way, speaking of your father, I just want to say... I've read, like, the first, like, 100 pages of Dune. It's boring. And they are spoiling everything. Like, I'm not saying the movie's better, because, like, that's like saying, oh, the Lord of the Rings movies are better than the books. They're not. They're very different, and they're much more, like, palatable. But the fact that, like, Baron Harkonnen Uh just Uh says the entire plot in the Uh first chapter is like, oh, Okay. Because <laughs> that's so not what it's about, then. That's what happens. I know. There's so much more to it than that. But I'm saying, like, I know that, like, Doom Boring. Part 1 is only, like, Part 1. But, like, that's the whole big reveal is, it... is that the Harkonnen attack. And, like, it's Boring. a big surprise. And, like, oh, Dr. Yue is a spy. This is, oh, betrayal. It's, like, it's just, like, oh, Dr. Yue is a spy. We're going to have him um, overthrow, um... The Duke of Arrakis. Oh, and uh, we got this guy over here, and the Emperor's backing us up. And uh, yeah, just everything. Just letting you know everything. Boring. He said boring. All right, ask those questions. I, I, have no res- I have no retort to that. I won't dignify it with the response, besides reflecting it back to you, that you said boring. Yeah, you also called Indiana Jones's, like, dad reveal <laughs> that he's a dog. <laughs> it's acting like a dog. Because he also took the name of the dog. You know, I also thought the first chapter of The Hobbit was boring, so let's fucking go. <laughs> it's a children's book! <laughs> I thought green eggs and ham was dull. <laughs> I just, so, why do I create content? I don't really know. No one does. No I one know. knows why they create content. Oh, oh, I thought you meant me. Why? No one knows why I. No, I'm not do. that mean. <laughs> Sometimes you're mean. Sometimes you're mean. Am I? Yeah. Okay. All right, what are questions? What stands out as the best actor, oh, sorry, best moment for this actor? Uh, in these two episodes? Definitely the band reveal for me. Like, when he's trying to, like, semi-spit game at Evangeline Lily. I love when he's like, I'm Charlie, by the way. That's my name, it's Charlie. <laughs> that <laughs> like, is good, because, like... It's funny. Like, um, even Jack does that. He's like, I realize I don't know your name. Like, I, there is a part that, you know, <laughs> it's hard to talk about Dominic Monaghan when, like, they kind of focus on him. Like, they give him, you know, the, the band moment and stuff like that. But this is so very... Like, Jack and Kate, the show, so yes, far. Yes, totally. And I do love that where, like, he's like, I realize I don't know your name after she, like, sews him up and saves his life. Right, right. And then when she, like, you know, the monster's chasing them, they get separated. She does the five seconds of fear. Yeah. And then they reunite. And it's really good acting by Evangeline Lilly of, like, she wants to hug him. She wants to, like, oh, my God, I... I'm not saying that they she loves him or something, but like there's something there. Yes. But then she realized like, oh, we met like three hours ago. Yeah. So I it's a it's a good scene. There's some really good stuff in this in these first two episodes. I know I'm saying really revolutionary stuff that <laughs> lost is good, but <laughs> But but it is good. And I think accepting that and appreciating that and just repeating that is good. It's it it, it deserves to be said though. Because some things maybe 20 years ago you'd watch today and you'd be like, you, you can't tell. When, like, I know people watch La Brea, whether it's because it's good or it's good, bad. I Is don't know. Is that the one where like the world, like yes. La Brea tar pits sink in and they end up with dinosaurs? Yes. Fuck 100%. yeah, 100%. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Keep people cooking. Watch, people Keep watch cooking. That. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't tell me they're going to watch that in 20 years and be like, this was a fucking great pilot. <laughs> no one's going to say say that oh, what was it what was the terra nova did you ever watch that no that was like the big one it, it was starring the guy from uh his name's uh lang like do you ever see don't breathe the where the the blind guy is uh chasing around people in the house no okay i don't watch these things okay yeah, that's fair scary it's very scary but it's poopy <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um but like that was like the big like he was the star of it um and, you know, it was supposed to have, like, really good dinosaurs. They weren't good. It's okay. It's TV budget. 
But like it lasted like only one season because it was like too expensive for the. Okay. Uh, but I watched all of it and I was like, oh man, what would have happened? And it's just, it's always sucks when like those network TV shows go out because like they always they mastered take note rings of power they mastered finishing a fucking season storyline and then teasing the next season they did that learn how to do that new I, uh, golden age of television i think we i think it's the prologue we just have to accept that we were watching the prologue i will never forgive i think it was I think it was Showtime. I think it was on Showtime. It was on Max. One of those shows. Cinemax. Dead Like Me. Did you ever watch that? With I, the, the name chicken? rings a bell, but no, I didn't watch it. No. It, 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 you didn't need... There wasn't like a huge cliffhanger, but it needed two more seasons. Yeah. Because I didn't wrap it up. But there was a couple... That show... There's a couple shows that I'm like... I know people feel that way about um, the guy who you love. Uh, Lee Pace. Uh, the show where he brings people back to life. Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's huge. It's a huge show. Uh, it wasn't huge because it didn't do well and it didn't last. But everyone, it's like it got a cult little following. Um, is it, it the a OA? Show. No, no. Uh, Lee Pace is in it and he's dead and he can touch people and bring them back to life. Uh, the Good Shepherd? No. Nope. Uh, nope. And uh, Glinda the Good Witch is in it too. Halt and Catch Fire? No, God. I don't know. I'm just going down. Pushing Daisies. Life. Pushing Daisies. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, that's that's from like fifteen years ago. Okay, but people needed more of that, and it just got canceled. So like, there got was also it. that era where it was like, Jesus, no, you have a great fucking show. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, no. Dominic has like fun moments. He's definitely the comic relief, but not like in a being poked fun way at like Hurley is. Yes. Um. Which it makes me sad, but Hurley's also like cash and checks because like go for go, get it, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that that's my answer to that question. Good question. Next question. Next question. Who in the fellowship would you recast as this actor? I think Ooh. I'd go Elijah. Would you? I think I think Elijah would fit in really. I think you wouldn't. <laughs> I think you'd be a little more like, okay, this guy's a fucking drug addict. The minute you meet him <laughs> with Elijah. Will- <laughs> with the eyes, you're like, uh. <laughs> I actually would love I'm to Ch- see I'm it. Charlie, by the way. <laughs> Um, I disagree. I, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't cast him, but yeah. I think you're not wrong. Um, I think Orlando. Give Orlando oh. that num num num. He do our the recast. Hell. I think I need to come up with a new question because, like, we do recasting like as well as this. So I think I need to come up with a new question because, like, I have Orlando as like the brother of Maggie Grace. That's totally. Who I have. Yeah. But I, but if he's not that character, then he's he's cast as this. It's like like the upstart like. Stinky, like, um, but I think, like, Evangeline Lily, like, you, I don't know, it's like you have to know because I think 2004 Orlando Bloom, you look at him, you're like, oh, he could also get with Evangeline Lily because, like, you're looking, sure. you're looking around the table and you're like, Saeed could probably do it, Josh Holloway could probably do it, Daniel um, Day Kim could do Daniel it, Daniel Day Kim could do it, and Jack could do it. So yeah. there's like four suitors for the hottest woman on the island. Charlie's not one of those people, Dominic Monaghan, I mean, even the brother could. Even the brother could. And that's why I have Orlando Bloom as the brother, because like he's got like you have to know it's almost like a oh, come on, Charlie. She's ar- she's obviously already in love with Jack. Like there's already like, you know, that where and then and that's why it works where he's just like, oh, Maggie Grace, you're coming too. Well, I'm going to now. It's like, <laughs> he's also just like casting his line. See him. Uh, he's just, he's yeah. just throwing <laughs> he's dynamite fishing, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he, he's like spam texting hey you up like you know at 2 a.m on snapchat god i miss the days when i could like like um what do they call it when a girl like posts a little something sexy oh a thirst trap i knew I, I miss the days where i could throw a thirst trap up and get a couple good responses right yeah. <laughs> you really do good stuff because i only wanted one guy's response but then i'd get 12 others yeah you know yeah, yeah. I mean? confidence boost is totally fine no was, but i but i don't usually always worked with the guy that whose attention i wanted usually it did yeah oh well, there's good. one time in particular i can remember just let me go down this this well I've, there's a guy who uh uh, shall remain, remain nameless, and I, we were doing a Galentine's, and I'm in a jacuzzi, oh. and I'm not even revealing anything. 
But the two girls behind me are rubbing their boobs up against each other while I'm talking. <laughs> and this guy said, still partying <laughs> to that book. I will say that is the most wannabe nonchalant response. Still partying. He's like, hey, are you guys still hanging out? It was, oh, and this guy could get it. This guy could get an, anybody, anytime. He wasn't also just looking for me. He was looking for one of them or me. Like yeah. it was, he, he was also tired of like fishing because I knew exactly what I was doing too by posting that. Yeah. I was like, what's up? And without fail, got that response. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, it was great. It was a good time yeah. and ended, ended horribly. Does Peter Jackson directing this make it better? Maybe he finishes stronger. I think he I think him directing this could make it better because it's very TV director. I think you still need JJ to write it though. Sure. But but then you have to let JJ go and not come back for the end. What's like that? Peter yeah. does great. This is when we've talked about this too, like with Indiana and stuff like that. Peter does great when he can see the whole breadth of a project and yeah. see it through. This is what bothers me about the Star Wars stuff. Just keep JJ on the fucking project. He didn't want to be there. And, but that's, and he didn't want to be there for Star Trek too, by the way. I don't know if you knew this. He didn't even watch Star Trek. He wasn't a fan. He ended up doing, I liked what he did with Star Trek. He gets tossed these things he doesn't want to do. And his Star Trek was basically like, I want to do Star Wars. Here's here's my Star Wars in the Star Trek. And it's universe. good. It works because Chris Pine's fucking charming as fuck. And Zoe's That's the thing, up. Like, that I, I do You enjoy, can't miss with that. No, that cast is fucking insane. That you like, cast that, all those people. I don't care if you fuck them, set them on in a submarine in a p toilet. They will yeah. succeed. Like that cast is so insanely stacked that like when Simon Pegg shows up as Scotty you're like okay this is almost too much <laughs> <laughs> that's why they had to give him this weird fucking sidekick because it's right? a joke um, like basically a Grogu or like um, what's the little guy who like fixes everything in this in the start oh it is it's like that little guy who fixes everything R2 with, uh, with Ma Maz Kanata whatever um, forget it this is another <sighs> forget it we need to we need to extend this beyond the Middle Earth series to Carl Urban. Maz Kanata is the owner of the pub in Force Awakens. I know, she doesn't but have doesn't a little she, guy. No, but she takes them to somebody or like that fixes things, and he's like, gah, gah. <laughs> like he sounds like. <laughs> oh, you're talking about Babu Frick. <laughs> Babu Frick. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He's. He, they give Simon Pegg basically a Babu Frick. They do. They do. They give do. Him a Babu Tell Frick, me I'm yeah. wrong. Okay, I just couldn't. Couldn't articulate. They give words. him. They give him a Jawa, basically. Um, oh the yeah, little, bidet, bidet, bidet. yeah, yeah, the little, yeah. The little sand people. Anyway, uh, we need to do Carl Urban next. I think after Vigo, regardless. What a oh, that's tough. So it'd be it'd be Star Trek two thousand nine. Uh huh. It'd be um, Dread. Uh huh. Uh, what other and movies? then you could we could throw in Ragnarok. I guess. Um, let, let, let's finish this and we'll, then we'll, I'm just saying Carl, Carl, it would be real fun. Carl would be great. I so, love Carl Urban. I think Peter Jackson does a great job. If you just let him do his thing and like follow through, that's what I think that's, so too. That JJ has bad follow through. He does. He knows he, like I do. I do you ever watch super eight. No, but I was talking to, we had an interview for our, my other podcast on Ron Barry, where we were talking to one of like the main technical directors. Um, that was like one. The, that's the only movie I saw in like 4DX. And, uh, well, it was called something else back then, but like it was just the chairs. Man, what a movie! Crazy. I get it confused with the Spielberg millimeter, eight millimeter. There's no. Sp there's a Nicolas Cage movie, eight millimeter. Uh no. Uh, what it is. Was, uh, is this the kids? Oh. I thought that was a Spielberg movie. I it have is, seen it. It is J.J. Abrams trying to be Steven Spielberg. I have seen this then. Yeah. Okay. And I liked it. I remember liking yeah. it. Yeah. That's. Yeah. It was kind of like Elle Fanning's coming out party. Yes, it sure was. And I always remember that as a Steven Spielberg movie. So that when we were interviewing this guy talking about Super 8, I sat back because I didn't realize uh, that that's actually exact, exactly the correct movie I was thinking about. No. Yeah. It is literally J.J. Abrams being like, I movie. love you, Steven Spielberg. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> 
percent. Yeah, I love you, uh, Steven Spielberg. I love you, Steven Spielberg. Um, <laughs> could the main characters of this movie deliver the ring to Mount Doom? I'm not sure yet, actually. Not I don't, based it, off of the pilot. Based off the pilot, I don't know yet either. Because they have a hard enough time getting the transceiver. To I, have, I don't believe it. I don't. I refuse until like Webster himself puts a gun to my head and says, "This is a real word." I will is, not believe it. This is your currency, Ben. Is just you are just so good at doubling down on like your beliefs and your core values about these things. And, and my really core making... values is a transceiver. <laughs> it's not a word. <laughs> I'm just saying you make me care about things I didn't know I care about. Like you, you do such a good job of. Uh, examining the things that need to be examined. Because, like, it's such a good script. Like, the dialogue is so good. It flows so well. And, like, yeah, we just got to go get this transceiver. <laughs> what? <laughs> a fucking radio. <laughs> like, I'm used to, like, you know, technical jargon. You want to make up, like, again, we watch Star Trek. We watch Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones. All these things have made up fucking languages and words and items and things. But, nah. Transceiver ben, doesn't do it. If they had a transceiver... Why didn't they use it when the radio went out and they turned around instead of going to Fiji? I don't know, man. I don't. I mean, like maybe it was broken then. I'm just saying the pilot sure didn't act like it was broken because he's like, we need to get the transceiver. Yeah. <laughs> so why didn't you guys fucking try to contact people when the actual radio went out? Anyway, no, I don't think so far <laughs> that these people could get. So maybe far John Locke could. Yeah, John Locke playing backgammon probably could. Actually, he would probably be Sauron, honestly. Was he the... being racist? Oh, like, uh, with dark, dark and, light. and light? I think this he was talking about more good and evil than, yeah. than like actually like race or anything like that. But it was... But he but was, was definitely like a the... villain speech, for sure. It was that. I just thought, I, I thought it was punctuated by the fact that he was playing with the black kid, too. I think you could you could definitely read into that for That's sure. That's all. Yeah. It was, certainly wasn't him going, being overtly racist. I just thought it was um, symbolism all around. Yeah. That's all. Uh, okay, so no, I don't think so based off of what we know about these people. Yeah. Uh, what are some other honorable mentions for this actor? I don't know if there are any. Pew! <laughs> the on the on Friendship Onion? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, their their podcast. Um, he's got. He's Did got tell you fifty-four credits, and like he's he's working, and it's like a lot of them. All the hobbits do a lot of voice acting. Sure, they do and a his lot voice of voice. Is real deep now. Yeah, they do a lot of voice acting. So like the man's had a career. I just don't know if anything really stands out besides this. He probably ate a lot of vagina, which gave him throat cancer, like what happened to Michael Douglas, and that's why his voice is really... So maybe that's his best work. Um, but I, did I tell you that I met him, and he had a pretty young thing on his on his shoulder, and you I know what? Like, I, I go back, and I don't know why you make content, <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> hey, man, I am at... <laughs> what his voice sounds like. There has to be some repercussion from going down on somebody all the time. He probably eats <sighs> so much vagina. <laughs> the amount, I will say, the amount of vagina all of the Lord of the Rings cast got they was... They pull. Like, um, talk about Mount Doom. <laughs> Mount Poon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the asshole, though, here. We're just oh. talking about what we're all thinking. Um, uh, I will say it does suck that like his other most popular thing is quite possibly the worst X-Men movie ever made. Is he X -Men, in that? X-Men Origins Wolverine. He's in that. Oh, baby, a very sweet small part. child. Yeah, pretty tough. It, it does suck. Like, I think if you're if I'm these guys, I'm totally stoked to be in the best movie ever that like will outlive me for years to come. But also I want to act still. So yeah. Like, you have both things, right? Like, I know Stephanie Courtney had this... Um, Who's that? Had this exact... Uh, it, like, coming to Jesus about it. She is Flo. She's a fantastic comedian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she makes millions of dollars. And can't be in a fucking TV show. She was in a TV show for... You know, like, you can't cast her. No. She had to, like, feel really sad about that. And then come back to going, actually, I'm really grateful. And now I can just stay in Groundlings forever. You know, like, yeah, it, it is a double-edged sword. But and, and anybody looking at her would be like, you're rich. 
chill. And that's the thing is, but that that's not what it's really about. I mean, it's it's kind of what it's about. It's partially about it. I was gonna say like, otherwise they wouldn't pay you millions of dollars. Um, but yeah, no. I guess what I mean is, it's fantastic to have now. What she could probably attest to is generational wealth. Oh. The, um, like, they stopped putting her in commercials for a while because she was probably too expensive. What, like, her little Jamie, whatever the, you know, the, the second guy. Is that why? Guy. It, fe- it felt like it. It felt like they were trying to get away from flow for a while because I feel like for at least six months, there was just Jamie progressive No, it was a couple years, actually. Was it a couple? Okay. Because I, 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 I can mark the time that you're talking about for sure in my it mind. It felt like they were like, okay, let's see if the world responds to Jamie. Sure. It felt Which like, you know, didn't. we've got Jamie on a rookie contract. You know, we need to re-sign Flo to her big, you know, her max max contract over here. And they're like, nah, you got to get the star back. And so they're like, OK, they shelled out the money for her and she's worth it. She is worth it. And, you know, they do have funny other um, ancillary uh, car guys. Like there's the other girl who's got a really interesting voice. And oh, yeah, there's cool. plenty of second she's fiddle funny. players. But Flo is the LeBron like. You don't have a championship team without LeBron. And all I'm saying is cool. That first huge paycheck, she made progressive what it is. And you're like so grateful that you're out of debt and all those things. Like even when I was doing really well with like Best Buy, but like if that had made me so much money just to be the voiceover artist for Best Buy and I couldn't do anything else because of that, that sucks. It does suck. It's a double edged sword. But like she could finance her own small film if she wanted to. But the public wouldn't want it. That's the thing. Because, like, just because she's acting in it doesn't mean the public wants it. It's a really weird thing. No public wants a small film until they see it. But I'm saying, like, we can't divorce Dominic Monaghan from, Lo- from Lord of the Rings, and he sticks out like a sore thumb. Because that's not what we want from him. We don't want him in this. I, and, but I, I, we want, our hearts want this for him. But when we're watching it, we're like, it doesn't but that, work. But in the same breath, Viggo Mortensen's gone on to do plenty of things. Like, because he melts into things better. Yeah, because he's a better actor. Like, that's just what it is. Like, Maybe. if Elijah Wood has had a, a career of being a, like, he's the most innocent boy in Frodo. And he's been a weird little guy in everything he's done since. And we love him for it. I love yeah. Elijah Wood in so many things. Sure. Like, I, of course, I still see him as Frodo because that's a, a timeless thing. But same with Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe will forever be Harry Potter. Sure. But he's had a really good career. He Robert Pattinson has way. completely redefined himself. It sucks that these are all men because Hollywood gives more chance to, to men in, you know, the later part of their careers. But I prom- like, I guarantee you, and I'm sure she's tried, but there's got to be a director out there from like A24 or Neon that will give flow from Progressive in their weird little scary movie or something like that. Because people would fucking line up to see that shit. I know Maybe. people would. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, and, and there is something to be said, though, too. There's only so many things you can do if you're the spokesperson for a show like that. That's the thing. Like, like I don't know what, what her non-compete clause is for Progressive. That could very well be be a, a factor as well so what was the question how did we get off of this tangent i don't know tangent? but i like this tangent a lot honestly. no it's a good tangent i think we could definitely tangent all we want um uh, it's I, a good tangent. it's really hard to quantify why <laughs> i'm having a hard time it's really please please stop um it's it's hard to quantify why it's harder to watch some actors move on and others not like the star trek curse is real too right like uhura couldn't do anything else sulu couldn't do anything else spock didn't do anything else like shatner really didn't do anything else after star trek the only person that can possibly say they had a career is fucking picard like so there's a star there's a star trek curse who else has worked besides directors you mean as directors? Well, it's like Frakes is working because he's directing Star Trek stuff. He had the the Unsolved Mysteries or whatever his show was. Chef's Kiss. So good. I also, like, I know it was a director, but Leonard Nimoy directed one of the most financially successful films in, like, the history of Hollywood with Three Men and a Baby. That movie made so he much goddamn that? money. I think so. No, I think you're right. What a fucking surprise, though. No, and that man is just... 
God's gift to Earth. He's and he huge Hobbit fan, huge Lord of the Rings fan. The most unsurprising Bilbo, news on the planet. Bilbo, yeah. <laughs> Bill. He has a song. Have you ever heard of this? He had like a record not. release. I'm sorry. He has a record release where he's wearing elf ears and he's dancing with three go go chicks. And he's like, Bilbo, oh, Bilbo, nothing, Bilbo. Nothing must have been better Baggins. than being like a celebrity in the 80s because like there was no TMZ. There's no smartphones. You could just do whatever you wanted and there's no repercussions. I like, mean, if you weren't doing cocaine, you were basically like sold out as like a narc. So like you almost had to do cocaine. So you're like, oh, I guess <laughs> I have to do cocaine in that Studio 54 like oh every night. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right. Next question. Next question is our recasting couch. Great. Oh, don't I know, say right? that. I just started <laughs> watching the the Nickelodeon expose yesterday, so please don't. Okay, the, that's very different. The, but you just say casting couch, and they were talking about it. it. Just it just brought it forth. Is all. I think um, I would have probably gotten on the casting couch to be in this show. Honestly, ours. No, lost. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Christ. you guys, uh, I'm coming forward and say Jessica put me on the casting couch to be in podcast. Jesus the Christ. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> for this show? What a way to denigrate your own podcast for this show? <laughs> this is why we do it, folks. We know you begged to be on this show, but Jesus, we didn't ask for that. <laughs> Um, okay, let's recast it. So I think you're right. Orlando Bloomy is the brother. Yeah, what's the brother's name? Is he not in a lot of episodes? I don't know. I don't remember I... this. I don't remember the brother and sister, to be fair. I really don't. Wow, it looks like... Okay, Shannon Rutherford is Maggie Grace. So it's got to be a Rutherford somewhere. Um, let me see. Oh, man. IMDb really sucks nowadays. I hate the new layout. Oh, I haven't. I'm not, I'm not aware. I'm not aware. I'm not aware. Um, Rutherford, Rutherford. Oh, wow. He's really an, not a lot. I'm not surprised. Spoiler alert. Maybe I'm missing it. I don't know. Maybe they aren't brother and sister and like the, the show lied to us. Who knows? But Maybe. anyways, Orlando Bloom's the brother of Maggie Grace. Mm -hmm. Who's Maggie Grace? Hmm. Uh, Miranda. Miranda Otto? I like it. Yeah. I like it. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with leaving Evangeline Lily where she is, by the way, because, you know, she's basically in both worlds. I think that's, I think that's fair. Good call. I think so, too. All right. Uh, Jack. Is I that mean, Vigo? I guess. I guess. What, who else could it be? I don't think it could be anything else, because I, I, I love uh, Sean Bean as Sawyer. Uh, chef's kiss on that. That's, you just earned your paycheck. Because the hair, too, especially. The hair. It's like, it really, like, from, I think they're in the same year, National Treasure, and, and <laughs> this this episode of the same they, year. Like oh, a big boy. Yeah, I just had to go pick oh, him up. Oh, you have to. He's Because he he's also sitting in my computer chair, too. So funny. Um, All right. Uh, so who we got as Terry O'Quinn, John Locke? I think Christopher Lee. Oh, I think that's exactly right. I want to see him monologuing to a young child about backgammon. <laughs> 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 That's not how a man a man wouldn't scream if you stabbed him there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good boy. Uh, I think uh, John Rhys Davies is Hurley. Oh yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right. Um, who's uh, we got Billy Boyd? Billy Boyd would be yeah. Who's Billy Boyd? Yeah, who would <laughs> Walt's son? <laughs> Walt's son. <laughs> Um, would Billy Boyd and, uh... Or Walt is the kid, no, that's his name. Yeah, yeah. Um, it sucks because, again, like, it always... <laughs> the only tough part about recasting, like, with Lord of the Rings is just because they're all white, and this it's is a very true. diverse cast. It's also true. It's like, who are we replacing the Korean actors with? Which <laughs> white guys are we replacing? <laughs> I'm taking, like, a step back from that one. I'm like, you just stay over there. Yeah. <laughs> you, you stay cast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hmm... Naveen Saeed. Who's going to be Saeed from the Lord Although, of the Rings cast? I, you know what, though? To be fair, actually, John Reese davies could be um, Ooh, he Saeed could be Saeed. because he has he a history of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That lock, lock that in. I, okay, so John so Reese davies means, That means Billy Boyd is Billy Boyd Hurley. is Hurley. I like that. I like that yeah. a lot. Um, uh, Frodo's the dog. Frodo's the Elijah's dog. Elijah's the dog. 
Because he also had a TV show where he had a Wilfred, the talking dog. Um. Okay, I think... Uh, let's see. I think... I- who's Ian McKellen? <laughs> I was going to say the pilot. Who's the pilot? Let's start there. I was going to say Elijah Wood's the pilot. Oh, uh, then he doesn't live? Yeah, he's just gone. Yeah, sure. Okay, Elijah Wood could be the pilot. Um... But then who is, who did you just ask? Ian McKellen. Ian, who is Ian McKellen? Oh, 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 oh. He's uh, the fire marshal, the marshal uh, that has the shrapnel inside of him. Oh, where is she? Or like, yeah. where is she? Like, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Because that would be a good reveal, too. Because, like, you don't, like, recognize his face and then he wakes up. Uh-huh. Um, Saeed? Do we I, need, no, no, Saeed is... Oh, John Reese David. Oh yeah, that's right. John Reese David. Okay. Um. Uh. So who are we missing? So we're missing. So we have John Reese Davies. We have Boromir. We have Orlando. We Sam, have Vigo. Uh, who's Sean Ooh, Austin? Austin. Is he Harold Perrineau with the kid? Yeah, it feels so wrong, but yes. I think so. Yeah, I think that's right. Kind of not great dad, but wants to be. Wants to be, yeah. Yeah, I think that's really, right. Really, really trying hard. Um, okay, who are we missing? Who are we missing from the fellowship? So I think we got the fellowship. We got we had Boromir, the fellowship. We got the fellowship. Do we want to cast anybody else? Because I feel like anybody we cast, we're just replacing a person of color with a white guy. No, it's true. <laughs> Although you could put Liv Tyler in, in, in for the pregnant lady. Or the Asian lady. The Korean woman. I think Liv Tyler's the pregnant girl. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know. I think, I think uh, Hugo Weaving replaces Daniel Day Kim because they he both does. just like. Yeah, no, they're mewing the whole time. They're just oh. mewing. I like, can't wait to talk about. The mewing in, in House of Dragon is off the fucking charts, dude. <laughs> it's insane. Mm, this man was burned alive by a dragon. Hmm. <laughs> Shut I mean, up, even Rhaenyra started being. Um, anyway, yeah, I think that's it. I think we got it. All right, why don't you it. get uh, run down the list? So Evangeline Lily and Dominic Stays Monaghan stay. We got Jack <laughs> as Viggo Mortensen. Uh-huh. We've got Billy Boyd as Hurley. We got Sean Bean as Sawyer. Uh, we've got Christopher Lee as John Locke, which I don't think we learned his name in the first two we episodes. Don't. Um. We've got uh, Saeed is John Rhys Davies, uh, Michael Which is Dawson. Just ridiculous. I know. It's, I love. It. It's such a good call, though. It's so perfect. Um, <laughs> uh, Harold Perrineau, uh, Michael Dawson is Sean Austin. Uh, the pilot is Elijah Wood. <laughs> <laughs> no, and or the, the dog. Yeah, or the dog. Uh, dual parts, actually. Like that's how he gets his residuals because, like, he, like he comes back as the dog. One hundred percent. And then, what is it? Uh, who else? We had um, Orlando Bloom is the brother of Maggie Grace, and Maggie Grace is Miranda Otto. Chef's kiss. This is and a- then if we really wanted to, we could make um, Kate Blanchett and um, Hugo Weaving um, uh, the Korean couple. Absolutely. Dana That's Day right. Kim and um, I can't think. I, I don't know her name. Yun Jin. What if, what if it's that they, ju- they are elves and we, they just... Can't, they don't speak like common. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. And like their hair is always down, so you can't see their ears. <laughs> totally. Like, uh, like what's his name, Theo? Like that. Totally. That whole... It's real good. Um, this is good. This is good. I, I, I like the excuse to watch Lost. Now we have an excuse because we're gonna do Vigo next, and I think Vigo has enough that we actually do need to hold a vote. Oh, for this. big time vote for Vigo. So let let's decide the four for Vigo right now. I'm bringing it up because he's Hidalgo, got Hidalgo, like you said. I I don't even know if Hidalgo's on there because he's got he's got Eastern Promises. He's got History of Violence. Um, he's got Captain he, you, Fantastic. You have uh, to put the Green Book on there just for just for good measure because that was such a huge movie. It was such a huge movie, and I mean, honestly, like as much as I really hate Green Book and the fact that it won Best Picture in a really good year of movies is so insulting. I remember that. Yeah, I find like TikTok gives me clips of it every once in a while. God damn, him and Mahershala, Mahershala. Ali are so good. Like, I know. Anybody else's hands, that movie is like a straight to T and like a straight to Tubi. 
piece of shit movie, but because these these actors are so good, you're like, I am rooting for this friendship. It is like the Christmas scene makes me cry. <laughs> I've n- I've never seen it. it it's totally okay. So interesting. Green Book. I'm voting for Green Book, History of Violence, Eastern Promises, and then you can pick the fourth one, Jess. I think that's you, Hidalgo, because those are the only two names I know. We've got The Road. We've got... Oh, he's on The Road? Oh, you have to do The Road. The, you have like, to do The, the Road. The, the saddest post-apocalyptic Yes, you have movie. to do The okay. Road. So Green Book, The, the road. road. I don't know the other two. Are you sure those are as ubiquitous as you think they are? Eastern Promises for sure. I think okay. he was nominated for this one. And then A History of Violence is a really... Uh, I've it, never heard that. They're two... Like, he became David Cronenberg's guy for a little bit. And they're two Cronenberg oh. films. That still doesn't push it over for me. But um, I, I'll trust you on this. You have more uh, or media do we literacy. Wanna, do we want to... I'm okay with leaving History of Violence out. Do we want to... Let me... Is The Dead Don't Hurt... Do we want to do his directorial debut? Do we want to throw that in there, or is that, like, too recent? I think it's too recent, and I'd rather just do that in general. Um, okay. And I, and I really do think Hidalgo has to be up there because it also balances the scales. All right, so Hidalgo, Green Book, Eastern Promises, and... The Road. And The Road. That's a huge swath of... For sure. Taste, or, or uh, types of movies, I think. Do you want to switch out Eastern Promises with the death thing? History of Violence? Yeah. No. Eastern Promises fucking okay. rules. I, I, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to take away your opinion here. I'm just, I just think people know the name Hidalgo, blah, 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 blah. You know. Um, okay, I think we did it. So keep an eye out. on. We will make sure the vote goes out onto Patreon, onto Twitter, and onto Instagrams. So keep an eye out for that. If you would like to just keep up with what we're doing on Patreon, you don't need to pay. You can just become a free member. Yeah. So you can go to patreon.com forward slash podcast of the rings. If you'd also like to hear our House of the Dragons podcast, you can do that for seven days for free and then decide whether you want to join at the $5 tier. So Absolutely. consider doing that. A few of you have come in that way. Save a little bit of money before you start giving us all this cash. Listen, we give you two quality podcasts. Almost every week, I think $5 is not a bad way to say that you appreciate us and also put a coffee in our hands every now and then. But that's I up mean, to you. Nowadays, can't even buy a coffee. It's crazy. It's true. But you can add to points on your Starbucks app. I'm just hey. saying it's not. It, the, also, also, one of the grocery stores out here, we save $70 by using their app. It's it, The in, inflation is a whole nother time. We could talk about it. It's just... It's everything's way too expensive. So we also understand if you can't give us money, but if you can and it works for you, we appreciate it. Ben, if they're listening on a podcast or watching on YouTube, what's a free way they could help us right now? Um, leave a comment on YouTube. Leave a like. That always helps, and it's really easy to do. You know, what were your thoughts on Lost? Try and keep it spoiler free because I think we're both going to continue this show. But, you know, where were you in 2004 when you discovered this? Or did you just start watching it because it just dropped on Netflix? Because I know a lot of people are doing that. Um, and then if you're on your favorite podcast platform, five stars. Leave a review if you really feel inclined to. But five stars, you're literally just like, it's just a swipe. It's just a real easy swipe. Uh, but, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. This was really fun. I'm really glad we decided to, to watch Lost. I'm really glad I did. This was this was the best way to appreciate Dominic too. Also, if you you find like interaction information, if you just click share and copy link on YouTube, it also tells the algorithm that you like this Ooh, show. Oh, look at that! If you save a, a post on Instagram, it tells Instagram you like our show as well. So there's different ways you can support your favorite creators without giving to them monetarily. Terrially. Um, ben, I love doing these shows with you so much so that we're going to record Podcast of the Rings. Right. This show? Uh, I mean, podcast this of... This show? They're going to submit to a casting cast for this show? This show? That's our, that's our new slogan. <laughs> this show? Okay, anybody. <laughs> right. uh, until next time. May our paths meet again on the casting couch. <laughs> <laughs> For this show? <laughs> For this show? <laughs>